Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. It's back to the strongest chess tournament on the entire planet. The Top Chess Engine Championship of Season 15 is therefore the most sophisticated tournament from the entire lot. We are in the super final stage, and without wanting to give anything away, this game was only played as we speak. So we have round 39 with Stockfish starting with the white pieces. And what we have in operation is an eight move opening book. It's the French poison pawn variation. So let's run through this to see where the moves come from. E4, E6, D4, D5, Knight C3, Bishop B4, e5, c5, a3, takes, takes, knight e7, queen g4, and after castles, bishop d3, and knight c6, we are out of book. One idea that doesn't really work here is to go for this bishop move, because there is one move that stops white's plan. It's not knight f5, but this, go for knight f5, and when the knight is removed, you can't even remove the bishop because you're going to run into a mate. So coming back, Stockfish developed the knight, and when Leela shot off with this pawn, there is not even time for a bishop move to h6. Queen back, and we see how aggressive these engines are. Queen a5 was mounting the pressure on c3, forcing basically the bishop to step into cover. And strangely enough, Leela turns out this very strange looking response. Leela restricts her own queen's movement, but why? What was the engine calculating? She evaluated her options and calculated no danger. c4, for example, We'll get her to move here. And if d5 is removed, recapturing with this pawn is mostly likely to get in this move. And out of nowhere, it seems black might come out of this attack better than expected. Bishop a6. And when the bishops come off, the game is by no means over. Coming back... Stockfish came up with this response to prevent the queen from using this square so that she can be attacked. But Stockfish's plan fell short. Why? Because of this attack on the bishop. Bishop back and now this attack. And when Stockfish went for short, this guy on a4 was arrested. And Leela is up by full pawn. But... The game of round 26 was exactly the same picture. Leela was down by full pawn, and it was Leela the engine that kept the pressure on. And with these types of games, if you think a pawn can be a game changer, what do you think happens if you're down by three pawns, not one? And the engine with the inequality ends up winning the game. Rook A2 was the first sign for what was to come. Bishop d7 getting ready to protect the pawn led to this thrust first. And this is a strange thing with engines. They see far more, far, far more than what we are able to see. Lila went for a king move, but wasn't something like f4, a more exciting move to go for. I can't really figure out why the king would want to hit the edge, but it certainly removes the added pressure of a possible h6 response. When the rooks got together, we know what stockfish at cooking. If Lila wants to cover a4, she can by relocating this knight. But can she? If knight back to the back rank, after knight g5 and knight f7 to challenge a knight, do you go for the trade, or do you save the knight? 
If you retreat the knight here, there are some complications. But black may be fine after all. But after rook a1, Lila went for this response. And when a4 came off, the queen was forced to flee. But was she? Is there something else here that may warrant you to reconsider? Any takers? In two, one, and pause. Though getting that queen to retreat to the back rank seems fine, Lila did this differently. She came in with this check, forcing the rook to take. And when this rook also departed, Lila is back into the game. Stockfish has a pawn under attack. The rook can easily cover, but also there are two additional pieces, minor pieces able to cover. There is the knight and the bishop. How do you think Stockfish decides to play here? The engine was not even concerned about the safety of its own pawn. It went for this attack on the knight. And the thing is, if you go on to remove this pawn, not only the rook is under fire, the bishop too is threatened. And if you were ever able to cover them both, there is this pawn here too. So, is it safe to say black dominates this game? Not by long shot. After rook b7, queen takes and bishop takes knight. If knight takes here, the bishop also comes off. And if knight g6 to cover, what if you go after this knight? Not only he falls, but any engine would walk into a mate. We know what engine that would be. Returning, after the knight came under fire, Leela saved the knight, and when this pawn crept up the board, Stockfish was determined to cut through. With this potential square being up for grabs, Leela blocked the rook from getting to it. And look at this, look at this one. H6, we need to drop the pawn to rip the entire position wide open. The first thing to try and work out is whether you need to take here, and if so, how. If you take with a pawn, after this check, the take is compulsory. And when the queen comes under fire, this is what you're looking for, queen d6. Once you get the queen into this beautiful square, there is queen back to cover, but how do you deal with this attack on the rook. If rook f8, there comes the knight into the game. The knight will be forced to drop back. There is so much to go for here. For starters, what about if you sack the knight? If you remove him with this pawn, look out for this check. And oops, this is not just a check, but the game ends. So let's hear it. So if we come back, Lila did take this pawn, but did this with the knight. And rather than removing this knight and landing black with a very bad double pawn, there is something else here. Find this, and you will be there. Can anyone fish it out in two, one, and pause? There is a crushing move here. Has anyone found this one? Because this is the only response. It doesn't matter whether you take or not. Let's run through both possibilities. If rook g8, you may even go for this knight g5, a very risky type of attack, because when the bishop comes off after f6 is removed, even if you drop the bishop back to have control of the light squares, after queen h4, this will be it. If rook g6 to cover for the knight, there is this threat on the rook and black is finito here. And this is how complicated things can get. So when the bishop was offered here on f6, Lila took him. And with the recapture, the rook did come in to attack the queen. Knight g5 to cover is moving just about in a similar direction we looked at just seconds ago. And when the rook stepped into block, it wasn't bishop h5, but this. And if you 
Do not get the bishop to a miracle square. A check on f8 will drop the knight unless you bring the knight back to block. Okay, let's see how Lila deals with this problem. Queen c8 seems to stop everything. But when the rook penetrated deep into the black camp, the rook came off just for the queen to be able to deliver those necessary checks. And here it comes. Queen f8 check. And should you block with the knight, you will get punished. All you need here is this knight check. And this is going to, <laughs> this is going to hurt if you were a human playing here. So it was the rook that came into block. And when the knight was removed, the only way to block the mate is to go for what Leela did. But when this threat appeared, the queen was forced off. And after the bishop removed the knight, the ending is still very playable. And with the king isolated in the very corner, how is white going to get there? This bishop move was the first step. Takes and not takes bishop, but this takes. And all these pawns are not matched to the might of this queen. Lila was not going to give up. She came up with this blow, threatening to remove g2 with a check. This check was squeezed in first. Rook g7, the only response to block, got the queen in with another check. And when the rook was forced back, if Stockfish wants, that draw is secured. But I don't think Stockfish is looking anything other than wanting that win. Another check and another repetition got the knight to come off. And rather than take with a check, it was the bishop that took. And when the engine was hoping for that discovery, a queen check, rook back, and this check got the rook to return and... The whole idea is not to get the queen anywhere on the light squares. But even if she does, all these black pawns are in fact a destruction for black because they do prevent black from utilizing even this plan. When the queen was attacked, the queen returned in with a check, rook back, another check, rook back, and the game ended in a draw. Or at least this is what Lila hoped for. Stick your queen back into e5 and that draw is confirmed. Stockfish came up with this brand new move to avoid the repetition. Lila still goes for it. a5 and king out the pin. And now it's all about whether the queen is stronger than the rook and bishop. a4, a check. And Rook, back to cover, dropped another pawn. And through this sequence of moves, when the queen was attacked, the queen delivered this check. And when the checks continued, after the king returned to the corner, this guy began to advance. Rook back, and when this guy slowly but gradually advanced, even when a4 became a3, we know he can't really make it to the other side unless he seeks cover from his own rook. F6, and Lila tried it. She managed the pawn to get all the way down to the brink of transforming into a nice, beautiful queen. But even if you queen, stockfish is unforgiving. If you go for this queen response, even if you bring a brand new queen on the board, what do you think happens when this queen removes this guy? A mate is a mate and it's game over. And it's as simple as that. But Stockfish here went for a very simplistic approach. He chased after this pawn. And when Leela went for a bishop response. When this guy bit the dust. The king was checked. King h3 and rook back going after this guy. Got the queen to return into the game. And when the bishop checked, after the king advanced, the bishop returned to where he was. Queen d6 got this king to reposition. And when the king was kicked here, this is how the game ended. A mate is bringing in the background because after this check, when the king reaches the corner, after this guy walks, 
that he's only rooked back to base. And when he comes off, after the king takes and this king move, the king is blocked. If you check the king, there is king takes and against any move, and let's assume this bishop responds. There is this mate. And of course, when it comes to engines play, even the losing party is able to calculate this type of ending. Once that mate is locked in, there is nothing that can be done. Unless there is a problem, whether a mate in 10 or 20 is a mate in 10 or 20. Some engines do get even this part wrong. Okay, another super final game out the way. And at least, now that we're looking at certain types of openings, more decisive games appear. Plenty of more to come, of course. So until next time, this was your chess puzzler.